Uh, hello, my name is Michael Grandy. I'm a professor at Providence College, uh, currently teaching managerial accounting. This is the uh, Kimmel Book 7th edition, and we're going to work on some, some exercises from chapter number 14. And chapter number 14 is uh, managerial accounting. So as you know from the Kimmel book, it is both a financial accounting book and a managerial accounting book. And this is the first chapter, this is chapter 14, where we begin managerial accounting. And as we talked about in our PowerPoint presentations uh, regarding this chapter, there the most important aspect of this chapter is the definition of product cost. And product cost is generally known as the cost of goods sold, but in a manufacturing company, product cost is very specific. It includes direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead. Direct materials are the major components of the product that goes into what we make. The illustration that I was talking about previously was a furniture company, a company that manufactures or makes desks. Very nice desk. We're not talking about Ikea kind of desk, a collapsible desk, desks that come in a box that you put together. We're talking about a very nice piece of furniture. And direct materials would be the wood, the hardware, glass that goes into the desk. Direct materials. Direct labor is the second major component of product cost, and direct labor are the wages, salaries, and benefits of the employees in the factory who assemble, who put together, who make the product. They're touching the desk. The third component of product cost is manufacturing overhead, and that includes a lot of things, okay? It includes indirect materials, so these are the insignificant items that go into our product, solvents, nails, glue, maybe some paint. We don't keep track of it. It goes in there in different quantities, but it goes in there, indirect materials. The second component of manufacturing overhead is indirect labor. And again, these are the wages, salaries, and benefits of employees in the factory for everybody except assembly line employees, except those people who make it. Illustrations of this could be the supervisors of the crafts people who put together the desk. Secretarial support within the factory. Janitorial maintenance security employees in the factory. Again, operative word here is factory employees that are non-direct labor. Third component of manufacturing overhead is other factory costs. I illustrate and I emphasize factory. This could be utilities on the factory, property taxes on the factory, insurance on the factory, repairs and maintenance on factory equipment, depreciation on factory equipment. I think you get the point, right? on factory related materials, not office, not the headquarters type of thing. So it'd be things like factory. Hold on, I gotta pause this for a minute. Have some maintenance going on in the yard, my apologies. So we're going to take a look at some, some exercises here and specifically looking at exercise 14.5 and this illustration talks about Gala Company is a manufacturer of laptop computers. Various costs and expenses associated with its operations are as follows. So we have 10 items. and. What are they asking us to do? The first thing they're asking us to do is the company intends to classify these costs and expenses into the following categories. Direct materials, direct labor, manufacturing overhead, and period costs. First item on the list is number one, property taxes on factory building. Operative word is factory. This is one of those other factory costs, manufacturing overhead. Second item is production superintendent's salaries. These are not people who put together the product. This is a factory salary, but it's 
manufacturing overhead. Number three, memory boards and chips used in assembly computers. In assembling computers, so memory boards, these are direct materials. Item number four, depreciation on factory equipment. Okay, it's a factory. This relates to manufacturing overhead. Number five, salaries for assembly line quality control inspectors. The operative word is assembly line. They're touching the product, direct labor. Number six, sales commissions paid to sell laptop computers. This is a selling expense. It is a non-manufacturing expense. Therefore, it is a period cost. Number seven, electrical components used in assembling computers. Again, these are major components of the product, direct materials. Number eight, wages of workers assembling laptop computers. Assembling, putting together. That is direct labor. Number nine, soldering materials used on factory assembly line. These are insignificant items that go into our product. This is indirect labor. Number 10, salaries for night security guards for the factory building. They're not assembling, but they're in the factory manufacturing overhead. So you need to be able to understand the elements of product cost and be able to classify them. Now, the next problem we want to look at is, is also going to ask you to classify these costs, but ultimately we want to be able to quantify cost per unit. Now, cost per unit is a concept that we're going to be working with all semester. What is cost per unit? We take the total cost and divide it by the number of units. Okay, fairly straightforward, but very, very important. So we're looking now at problem 14-1A. And let's read it. This says, um, Ono Company specializes in manufacturing a unique model of bicycle helmet. The model is well accepted by consumers and the company has enough orders to keep the factory production at 10,000 helmets per month, which is 80% of full capacity. 10,000 helmets, we're going to need to know that. That's the number of units they're going to produce later on in the problem. Ono's monthly manufacturing costs and other expense data are as follows. So we have a whole bunch of items here that we need to classify as direct materials, direct labor, manufacturing overhead, or period costs. So they ask us to prepare a chart here, and they ask us to break it down between direct materials, direct labor, manufacturing overhead, or a period cost. These three up here are our product cost. So again, the solution, the published solution uh, is on Sakai, but I want to walk through it and talk about it. So the first item they have here is um, rent on factory. And that's $11,000, that's gonna be Manufacturing overhead, rent on factory, other factory costs. Next item, insurance on factory. This is an example of another factory cost. Other factory cost, $1,500. Raw materials, these are the significant materials that go into our product. This is direct materials, this is $75,000. Next item is utilities on the factory. That's another example of manufacturing overhead of $900. Supplies for office, not factory, office, that's going to be a product, a period, period cost. Wages for assembly line workers, so people putting it together. This is direct labor. Next item, miscellaneous materials, glue and thread. Goes into the product, but not major components. This is indirect materials, which is a component of manufacturing overhead. Next item, factory manager salary. Operative word is factory. He's not putting it together. So this is an example of manufacturing overhead, $5,700.
Next item, property taxes on factory building. Operative word is factory. So that is an other factory cost. This is the component of manufacturing overhead. Next item is advertising for helmets. Advertising expense is a non-manufacturing cost. It's a selling and administrative expense. This is a period cost, $14,000. Next item, sales commission. Again, a non-manufacturing cost. It's an example of selling administrative expenses. This is a period cost, $10,000. And lastly, depreciation on factory equipment. Operative word is factory, makes it an other factory cost of $1,500. They have asked us to total these up. We have $75,000 in direct materials, $58,000 in direct labor, $22,100 in manufacturing overhead, and $25,100 in period costs, non-manufacturing costs. The next aspect of this problem says compute the cost to produce one unit. In other words, what is the cost per unit? What is the product cost per unit? And the product cost is made up of these three items here. Direct materials of $75,000. We have direct labor of $58,000, and we have manufacturing overhead of $22,100. Product cost, PC, product cost, is $155,100. Number of units from the beginning of the problem is 10,000 units. Cost per unit equals the total cost divided by the number of units, $15.51. Cost per unit to produce $15.51. Now, I added a third component to this product, to this problem. In the Thing, what I added to it is item C. It says, assume the company's gross margin percentage is 60%. What is the selling price for one helmet? Show all calculations. So it's very important for a company to establish its sales price. What are they going to sell it for? Do they just guess a number? So there's three things that a company needs to know in order to establish selling price. So establish selling price. First thing you need to know is what is the cost per unit? And we just did that, right? We came up with $15.51. $15.51 is the cost per unit. The second thing that we need to know is what is the desired gross margin percentage? And we know that answer there is 60%. Well, what is gross margin percentage? Now, you know what this is. This is from financial accounting, multi-step income statement, right? So this is where you had a company, they had their multi-step income statement, right? And they had sales minus cost of goods sold equals gross margin. Now they do it in dollars, but you can also do it in percentage. The sales number is always the 100%. Minus the cost of goods sold equals gross margin. So we know our desired gross margin is 60%. So if the sales number is always the 100% number, and gross margin, the desired gross margin is 60%, the cost percentage has to be 40%, right? 100% minus 40% equals 60%. If our desired gross margin is 60%, our cost percentage, which we're going to see in a minute, is 40%. 
Now, the third thing that a company needs to know when it's establishing a selling price is competition. What is the competition doing? Because it's very important to understand what the competition is selling the price for. So if I have a competitor, another company, that is selling the identical product that I'm selling, the same exact product, I need to know what the competition is selling price is. Because if the competition is selling it for $20 and I set a sales price at $22, what's going to happen to me? If my competition is selling it for 20 and I sell it for 22, I'm not going to do very well. So we need to know what the competition is doing. So knowing this information, knowing number one, that the cost per unit is $15.51. Knowing the gross profit the desired gross profit is 60%. What is the selling price? Well, it's important to know the formula. The formula for establishing the sales price is cost dollars divided by cost percentage. So we know the cost per unit is fifteen dollars and fifty one cents. What is the cost percentage? Well we just talked about that didn't we? Because if the sales number is one hundred percent and the gross margin is sixty percent that means the cost percentage is forty percent or point four oh right? Remember cost of goods sold plus gross margin has to equal the sales price. So here my cost percentage is forty percent. Therefore, the sales price, $15.51, divided by 0.4, the sales price equals $38.78. So when a company sells their product for $38.78, sales $38.78, cost of goods sold $15.51. They will arrive at a gross profit of 40%. So those are the problems I wanted to cover. Thank you.